Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Jim Frederick. I am the editor of Time International, and thank you so much to all of you for being here. My esteemed guest is Yasuchika Hasegawa, who is the president and CEO of Takeda Pharmaceutical. Welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you. And uh, good morning, everybody. <laughs> Today, we will be concentrating on, as I said, one of the world's most pressing problems, which is the challenge of designing sustainable health systems for rapidly aging populations. What about that issue is top of mind to you, and why has it become such an area of concern? Yeah, because, uh, you know, uh, population-related transformation is taking place in two fronts, in my opinion. One is the aging, but the other one is the growth of the population. Uh, if you take a look back the, uh, you know, uh, world uh, population growth in the last uh, 80 years, starting from uh, 1950, we have only 2.5 billion population back in 1950. But now, in today, 2011, we have 7 billion already. And uh, 2050, 100 years from 1950, we're going to have uh, 8.9 billion population, which is more than triple of the back in 1950. So very rapid growth of the population on a global basis. But at the same time, uh, since uh, late 1990s and beyond, population, uh, particularly in uh, matured countries, are aging. So we are facing two problems simultaneously. That's why I am uh, uh, very much concerned about the way population is going. Be because, uh, as uh, you may know, well aware, population projection is one of the most reliable uh, prediction in the statistics. And the United Nations or World Bank also issued their prediction. And also, uh, in, uh, for example, United Nations called for the uh, General Assembly to talk about the uh, <laughs> population growth and the aging population. Mm -hmm. And uh, back in the 19, early 90s, uh, World Bank uh, uh, issued the same similar uh, you know, aging uh, crisis type of report. But because this is not so visible, so people, majority of the people don't pay much attention. What about the disparity in, in the developed world versus mm -hmm. the developing oh, world? I'm glad you, you asked that question. You know, uh, in the mature, uh, developed world, as I said, uh, population is uh, population growth is almost now plateauing. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, uh, aging is uh, progressing. So we are having a very difficult problem. If you look back, uh, you know, ma many mature countries, developed countries, uh, economic growth, when economy uh, economy was rapidly growing. Population was growing as well. So this population growth and the economic growth come hands in hand together in most of the countries. But those days are over for mature than the developed countries. Still, uh, we are, uh, you know, station, uh, uh, nation leaders are talking about bring their economy uh, back to the growth trajectory. But it's going to be a very, very difficult to facing this situation mm -hmm. alone. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, uh, develop, uh, developing countries or emerging countries, the population are rapidly, still rapidly growing. So, th so they get a quote unquote population bonus, mm -hmm. uh, accelerate the economic growth. But once they, uh, you know, the population start declining, we call this a population onus instead mm -hmm. of bonus. So uh, developed countries are already a uh, entering into the population bonus situation. So it becomes more and more difficult to bring the economy to growth back to the tra growth trajectory. Mm -hmm. While uh, emerging countries are represented by Russia, China, uh, Brazil, uh, they are enjoying the population growth along with the economic growth. They are getting the tailwind of, uh, as a po population bonus. That is the current situation. It, it would seem like there's funding problems on both sides. Develop developing countries, which have a lot of people, and comparatively not as much money. Yes. There's just not as many dollars per citizen for health care, regardless of the age. I think in the developed world, you know, I think it's particularly chronic in, in Japan, um, parts of Europe, yes. uh, where the welfare state is, in, is installed to varying degrees. How are these people going to be cared for? How, do, how does the funding work? Uh, is there going to be enough money? Are, are the welfare states going to run out of money when more and more senior citizens need to be cared for in a more serious manner. 
you don't need to be a rocket science to solve this issue. Huh. It's easy, conceptually, logically, but implementation is a big problem. Uh, because when you face a declining population and aging population like country like Japan, while you see you know, population growth in uh, neighborhood countries, just accept immigrants uh, from those countries. That's a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. That's going to contribute to the economic growth of the, uh, any, any given countries in the uh, Asian uh, uh, community, mm -hmm. and also uh, help Japan to grow the economy. So that should be the lo very logical consequences. But uh, because of the, uh, some uh, difference, difference in culture <laughs> or mentality or resistance from the people, none of the countries have done this mm -hmm. well enough, with a few exceptions. But there are few exceptions. Right. Uh, many countries are not doing this. And uh, without knowing what's going to happen, very, very devastated situation is happening. Mm -hmm. Just like country like uh, China, right. because of the one-child policy, their family is going to be a four to one type right. uh, family. Mm -hmm. Four grandparents, mm -hmm. two parents, one child. Right. Can you sustain the, the social welfare system or social security system with this kind of family, family structure? No way. Well, if I, if I can ask a follow-up then. I mean, we've already identified immigration as one possible route to, mm -hmm. to, to doing so. And you've already indicated that in some countries, Japan, China, and other countries like that, that the immigration issue is, in terms of public debate, is really Very not, sensitive issue. It's just not on the table for yeah. the foreseeable future. So what other insights have you developed in trying to solve the problem beyond immigration? Are, are, there, are there other ways? So a country like Japan, who is not willing to open up uh, you know, uh, the flat gate to the immigra immigration, mm -hmm. immigrants, there is no much, not much other alternative. But you know, they have to be prepared to raise a tax, uh, to uh, manage uh, the uh, ever-increasing social w welfare and uh, social security cost. And uh, by doing so, the problem is shifting the money from less income young people to the higher income elderly people. Normally, logically, that should be the other way around. Mm. But because of uh, this situation, that's a reality in Japan. Mm -hmm. And the current uh, you know, administration is trying to fix that. But you know, not only Japan, but any uh, country. Mm -hmm. If the, uh, you know, the, uh, the politician tried to raise a tax, Nobody supported. Mm -hmm. So that's current, uh, the very, very uh, much a predicament we are facing in Japan. But we have no choice but raising the tax. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've now talked about three major ideas for supporting the increased healthcare costs mm -hmm. immigration, taxation, and perhaps on a limited basis, actually kickstarting certain countries' birth rates. Uh, other thing uh, we oh. can do is. Uh, we're facing that kind of situation. This is not also well. Uh, is, this countermeasure is not so popular either. People don't appreciate it. You know, extend the uh, re retirement age. Mm -hmm. In Japan, current mandatory retirement age is 60, but now it is going to extend to 65 on a stepwise manner. Mm -hmm. But people uh, live much longer. Countries like Japan, people are, are living 86 to 88 on average. Mm. So if you, uh, you know, consider uh, retiring at the age of 60, mm -hmm. uh, people have 25, 28 years life post-retirement. Mm -hmm. How come you can support those people from the, uh, with the money they uh, contributed uh, while they are working in, uh, on average, maybe 40 years? Right. But you know they are you know living with 25 post uh, retirement years. Yeah. You know their contribution is not good enough. That's why, and still Japan is uh, relying on pay as you go system, mm -hmm. not full full funded system. Mm -hmm. So young people's uh, contribution is uh, now shifting to the retired or elderly people in Japan. Right. This is not sustainable. 
If I could turn the conversation a little bit, we've just talked about you know, four big and broad ideas about how to support a system on the funding level. Mm -hmm. Have you had any thoughts or insights or you know, real change factor uh, concepts on you know, radical cuts in costs? Is there a way to bring health care costs That's da inevitable. down dramatically? That's inevitable. Okay. Yeah, because uh, let me uh, you know, um, talk about the Japan situation. Current pensioners, uh, if he lives or he or she lives, average uh, a lifespan of uh, 85 or 88, those people get um, 25 million equivalent, 25 million US dollar equivalent, more money than they contributed. Okay, but uh, 25 million. Japanese yen, <laughs> not, not US dollar, <laughs> Japanese yen. But if you calculate that with uh, people at the, in, in teenage, mm -hmm. soon to start working and they, you know, pay contribution uh, monthly, they're going to get 25 million yen, mm -hmm. less than they contributed. Right based on the current system. So this system is broken completely already. Mm. And the shift in the, the, the money from young and the low income people to the you know, high, high income elderly people, that's not fair mm -hmm. and that's not sustainable. Right. So we have to change. So uh, fi uh, you know, uh, the, the fixing, uh, there are several ways to fix this, but one thing for sure we need to do is cut back the existing pension is a pension, mm -hmm. which is very, very painful and very unpopular. Less, just like you said, mm -hmm. those people are very, very passionate vo voters. Mm -hmm. wow. And the uh, politicians are so much afraid of uh, you know, making them, them angry. Mm. So uh, every time this subject comes up, mm -hmm. you know, the, they start the talking about that. But well, sooner or later, it just dies. Mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing how fast a half an hour goes. We only have about five more minutes. Okay. Um, so if I could, the, the, the final major question is, with all of these insights that you've accumulated, do you have thoughts on new conceptual models or paths forward or an overarching um, message or theme or model that, that, that you think might be the way forward? The, uh, developed the, countries and the developing countries have to help one another by sharing not only their uh, wealth, but also technologies and ideas, and also accepting immigration, immigrant. Beauty of accepting the students is if they come to the advanced countries and uh, finish study or graduate school, uh, college or graduate school, maybe uh, some of them may stay in the country where they studied. And even if they go back to their own mother country, they can fully utilize what they have done to uh, rebuild or take off, help take, taking off the economic area of the, that mother country. So it works in the both way. Mm. We have to start acting on this now. That's a message I'd like to get across today. Okay, call to action. Um, well, I hope the audience has enjoyed this conversation as much as I have. Uh, Mr. Hasegawa, thank you very much yeah, uh, for joining welcome. us here today. And uh, thank you to the audience as well. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.